All right, welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. We're back at it with another update. Tesla has updated their mobile app. Now, while this has been out for a while on iOS, maybe a couple of weeks by now, it's just now released on Android. So let's jump right into it. Talk about what's changed, what's different, what they should have done better with it. Let's get into it right now. Tesla app. Before we jump into it, let's actually take a look at the app store description so we can understand what's changed and what to expect. So per the Tesla app store description, we have refreshed vehicle and energy homepage, streamlined summon experience, enhanced phone key support. Vehicle no longer needs to be selected. That sounds kind of cool. Sends commands to vehicles immediately upon opening app. Use go off grid to seamlessly disconnect your home from your grid with your power wall. Shop the Tesla catalog and view and manage your orders, as well as view supercharging history and the ability to pay outstanding service charges, as well as supercharging charges. So that's pretty cool. And that's aligned with the direction that Tesla's going, where they want to consolidate the user experience to just the app and even the car. Uh, using little, you know, over the phone conversations with people using as little interactions with third party payment systems. They want to consolidate everything within Tesla's ecosystem uh, and primarily using the mobile app to be able to do that. So that's pretty cool. All right. So let's jump into it. I think that uh, if we open the app immediately, we'll start to get a sense of what the speed looks like in terms of uh, being able to connect to the vehicle. That's always a sore point, depending on where you are, depending on your, your signal strength of the car your signal strength of your phone, if you're both on the same Wi-Fi, et cetera. So let's just open it up right now. Immediately we see a smaller T and we are greeted with some pretty cool graphics, some pretty cool updates to the model of the cars that are in the actual application. Looks pretty nice. The angle is also a little bit different. I would love if you could rotate this sort of how you can rotate it on the Model 3 and Model Y screen just so you can get different perspectives, but it's cool nonetheless. Okay, so generally there's just a UI change it seems. Everything going with the monochromatic theme that they've been going with with their cars using less colors and just using sort of black and white color schemes uh, and letting the car itself be the, the pop of color that you might have here. But so far, so good. Not too bad. Uh, but the name of the cars on the top left, you have the percent of charge or the um, miles of charge if you have miles selected. And then you have any additional information that's going to appear on that top left. Right now, the car is driving, so it's going to be four miles an hour. On the top right, you have your account settings where you're gonna be able to go there. It used to be on the left, now it's on the right. And then below the actual car, the vehicle, whether it's in motion or stopped or charging or whatever the case may be, you have some quick action items, which I think used to be a little bit different. I'll put them both up so we can compare side by side. But the idea is that these quick action buttons are gonna be some of the ones that, that Tesla thinks that users are gonna need the most. And what I see right here is I see the lock and unlock, which I think is pretty cool. And you also have a quick access to your climate control, which is also good. And then your charging and your state of charge and the frunk. Um, I don't know that the frunk is is used <laughs> widely enough for that to be there. I think the trunk might be a better option here, uh, which is you know more accessible and more used than the actual frunk. But we'll let we'll let Tesla tell us what uh, they think we need. All right, so. So far, so good. Below that, if you're driving, you're gonna have the media controls for your media. And if you're not driving, you're gonna jump right into the standard menu. And what I noticed off the bat is just that the uh, charging uh, menu item is no longer there. So I think when you just click on charging, if I click on charging now, okay, it, it, when you click on the charging button, it automatically opens the charge for it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but if you click on that, it also allows you to set your state of charge. All right, so you can see you can set your state of charge right there. You can lock and unlock the doors. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I guess they would move the controls, further controls to manually open and close the charge port to the controls tab. So let's jump into the controls tab. Nice slick animations for everything, for the transition from the car. I like that. Very reminiscent for the UI in the actual cars themselves, specifically the refresh Model S and X. Uh, but you have all the access to the car to open the front, open the trunk and unlock. And then there's the charge port button there as well as well as flashing your lights using the horn and then start. I'm so glad that they changed the icon from start from a key to 
you know, something reminiscent to a remote or something like a power button or something like that, which is more apt for electric vehicle. So good job on Tesla for that. Uh, and then you have your home link button as well. Now, in this particular one, I have the Model X up. We have the climate running, so you can sort of see through the roof and see the climate blowing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but then there's an the unlock button. Now, I think this is really good for Model 3 and Model Y and Model S to just lock and unlock the car. But I think for Model X, because it sort of has these auto presenting doors that effectively when you unlock the door, you should be able to control the Falcon Wing doors. I know one of the frustrating things about the X is that there's no way to open the doors other than the key fob or actually going up and pressing the button. It would be cool if we can control those from the app. All right, so that's there. Uh, and then if I switch over to the Model S uh, for the old mod, older Model S, I'll say I'm not going to give away any any hints there. Hint, hint. Uh, if I go to that same view, I also get the option to vent the roof for the sunroof. So if you have the sunroof, the venting of the roof is still there. And then, of course, uh, you don't get the lock and unlock button uh, for the Model S here, which is kind of interesting. So I guess you use just the lock button on the main home screen to lock and unlock. And on the control screen, you're going to be able to just vent the roof. So that's pretty cool. Okay, jumping back over to the X. Uh, the next screen we have is the climate screen. You start to see the nice animations. Again, a great transition. So now you lose the roof and you jump right into the details of the seat. So you can turn on individual seat heaters as well as the climate. So you'll be able to see the climate as well as the uh, options for the windscreen as well and maybe heated steering wheel. So that's pretty cool. And, and then you're also going to see something here where at the bottom you start to see the interior and exterior temperatures, which I think is also very valuable. So you can use your own discretion to understand how cold or hot it is outside versus what the temperature of the car is, which I think is valuable, right? So um, the climate control, you can turn on and off, and then you can also vent the windows as well. So that's all pretty cool, all right? In terms of the location, location tab has been largely the same uh, using Google Maps and whatever the latest Google Map features have in terms of, uh, you know, points of interest, traffic light conditions, uh, as well as sort of the 3D view of the updated maps. You can also send directions where it will link you to Google and in Google Maps, instead of showing your location, it will recognize that you have a car and your car is trying to get these directions to be able to use them. So that's also pretty cool. All right. In terms of summon, there's a new summon experience. I'll switch over uh, to another car just so we can see what that looks like because that car is actually driving. But the summon experience, they say, is better. Um, my experience, it's not better. Uh, it actually takes longer, but at least it gives you more information. Right. So summon is trying to load now. And it's saying waiting for accuracy, waiting for accuracy. And it pretty much stays on this screen the whole time. I haven't really got it to actually work, whether I'm on Wi-Fi on my phone or not. Uh, I've not really got it to work the way that uh, it's intended to work. So I don't know what warming up is. Warming up is here on the screen. Um, but basically, that's all I, I typically get. I'm right next to the car. We're both on Wi-Fi, great signals. But somehow, some way, we're just not able to connect for, for someone. So I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, we also have the security tab, which is pretty cool and new, where we're now able to have uh, activate sentry mode on and off, turn on valet mode on and off, as well as turn speed limit mode on, as well as the set to speed. So that's all pretty cool. We can also add the pin for the valet mode. But either way, this is a really good, really cool feature. It's really good accessibility for the car, just being able to have full control over the car. All right, we also have the upgrades. They also they always want to upsell you, so you have the upgrades tab where you get the details of what you can upgrade in terms of software, full self-driving, any accessories like full floor mats, et cetera. And then you have the service tab and the roadside tab, which prompt you to go for service, or you can view your service history, or you can view the video guides for your car which, on your phone, which is also pretty cool. And that's, again, tying into that mobile exclusive experience, right? So taking delivery of a new car is not like it was before. They want to have you look at everything on your mobile phone, prepare to take delivery, then they'll add your car and then make it available for you to unlock when you actually pick up a brand new car. So the delivery experience is totally hands off. We'll do another video on that one as well. All right, and then the roadside tab comes up. That's just for roadside assistance. They don't want you to call on the phone anymore as much as possible. So they basically are in a mode where they wanna call you, they don't want you calling them. Uh, and that's kind of how they operate both from a service perspective um, and maybe even from a, a new car perspective. That might be the exception. But in terms of getting service or trying to get someone on the phone, it's pretty difficult right now for Tesla. Tesla's trying to streamline that process and make it so that they call you, uh, you don't call them, and then you can communicate everything every, everywhere else through the app. So right when you open up the roadside tab, you get the 
immediate prompts, which I think is great. Instead of having to select it, it automatically comes up and says, hey, what's the problem? Flat tire, car will not drive, charging, etc." And I'm glad flat tire is at the top. We recently had another flat tire. Uh, so I'm glad to have this uh, this app here to be able to say, hey, flat tire and specify the conditions of that. All right, so that's what that is. And then at the bottom, it gets pretty plain Jane. It doesn't have the new, the old logos like they used to have before. They used to have the old logo for whatever car you have. It would be the um, the logo that is on the actual display in your car, which is stylized, has some color to it. Now they just say Model S or X, which is, you know, the font. And then they have a regular font of whatever that is, you know, 100D, P100D, long range, dual motor, et cetera. And then your miles and all the rest of your information. There are some additional screens uh, that you can go to, such as the account screen where you click on this, you go to the account screen, and that's where you can start to see your different cars at a high level. So you sort of zoom out and look at more of the account level. So you see your car, you see your car state of charge, which also is pretty cool instead of just showing the car. Uh, before they would just show the car and the VIN number, but now they're showing the car and the state of charge, which is I think is more valuable. And you can seamlessly switch between the two cars. Now they say when you open up the app, it'll just recognize the car you're closest to um, and then use that as the as the way to access it in terms of your key, uh, having the, uh, the phone key, uh, and you'll be able to access it that way. Uh, and it'll load right up. So you don't have to actually select or toggle the car and then open up uh, the, 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 the phone key and let it be present for that particular car. It'll automatically detect that. So that's pretty cool. Looking forward to trying out that out some more. But it's got all your information here, your name, it's gonna have your different cars and their state of charges, any new cars that you may have on order, your home energy, as well as the shop. So if you have a power wall or if you have solar, or if you have both, it'll have that information there and you can switch between your products that way. You also get your Tesla inbox where all of your notifications and, and, and special messages come. And then you'll also have your loot box. Uh, I kind of like the way that the loot box was before, it was kind of special that it would glow and let you know that you have some new referrals or whatever the case may be. Uh, but now it's just hidden in this menu, so it's sort of off to the side, and then you can click on it once it uh, loads up, and it'll load up your referrals as before. And then you have some account level details about contact information, order history, and your charging history as well in terms of be having billable charging. All right, and then you also have the settings as well, so what notifications you want to have uh, sent from the car. You can specify that right here, right in the app. So all that's pretty cool. Um, but basically this seems like a, a really good facelift or the beginnings of something better to come. It's not really the major game changing app that we thought it was going to be. I think it's just, it's just the fact that it's the start of something special. So this is the main baseline release and then we'll start to release more features hopefully in the future and we'll get more to see what comes after that. Okay. So, so far so good. Uh, again, again, just holding up the app side by side. My biggest complaint is that they should really put, uh, the frunk. Uh, button away and put maybe the trunk there or put the car start the remote start there uh, One thing I did notice is that when you actually go to controls and you go to start it no longer asks you for authentication Like it did before so you could enable fingerprint authentication as another measure of security uh, But now it doesn't do that it automatically just starts the car which I think is better because it happens a lot faster but also a little bit less secure that way so if anyone has access to your phone and can open up this app without authentication they can effectively drive away with your car. Uh, so that's not cool. Let me know in the comments if you know a way to activate fingerprint authentication or if that's just gone for this particular release. I think it's just gone. And I think they just wanna be able to get you up and running as quickly as possible. So just be mindful of that. Uh, if you had that extra layer of security enabled before, uh, if you're using face ID or if you're using fingerprint ID, uh, you no longer have that and you're just allowing someone to start the car immediately and, and take off. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, looks slick, looks good, moves pretty responsively. I can't speak to the connectivity of it. It still seems like it still suffers from the same issues from a connectivity standpoint. But we'll see. We'll see what happens over time as they iterate on it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you thought about it, the, the update. If you have the update for Android or if you had it for iOS and you've been using it for a while, leave your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk about it. Let us know what you think. And until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your testing.